morning. Um, is this working? Yep. Cool. Um, day five, it's been awesome so far. Um, I'm going to speak on uh, towards a dynamic economic, social, and political mesh. Um, November 2013, after uh, working on various Bitcoin, Bitcoin 2.0 projects, V uh, wrote version one of the Ethereum white paper. Uh, in January 2014 in Miami, uh, it was announced uh, to some fanfare, actually. Um, July 30, 2015, Ethereum 1 was released. Many people around the world constructed their own Genesis blocks, um, fired up the client they downloaded and watched in amazement as this tool, which embodied a new organizing principle for humanity, organized itself into existence. Uh, the Ethereum project has built the first general purpose world computer. Its dynamics and capabilities arise from a synergy of five interacting technological elements that are common between the Bitcoin and the Ethereum protocols. Uh, first is a blockchain, uh, data structure that you're all uh, quite aware of. Uh, second is the cryptographic token, the Bitcoin or Ether. Uh, third is peer-to-peer -peer networking systems, so that turns a traditional client-server-like infrastructure into a, an infrastructure in which all nodes are clients and servers. Um, consensus formation algorithm. In Ethereum, all transaction processors uh, come to consensus about what happened and when with respect to transmission and storage of the Ether value token, as well as coming to an agreement about all the processing that occurs on all of the shared programs on the world computer. Um, fifth element is a virtual machine. Uh, uh, Bitcoin has a, a very simple virtual machine, a very simple programming language. Um, essentially, if you're going to build an application on Bitcoin, um, you need to figure out how to stuff all the data that you care about into a, a small number of bytes, um, and you need to build behavior onto that. You have to build that generally outside of the protocol. Um, and if you want it to be secure, you need specialist developers to, to use cryptographic primitives to do so. Um, so Ethereum's core value, at least with, uh, uh, with respect to Bitcoin, um, is that arbit arbitrarily complex decentralized applications can be built by non-specialist programmers uh, entirely within the protocol. Um, so these five components uh, combine to represent a computational resource, a bandwidth resource, and a very expensive storage resource. Um, and essentially, Ethereum is a global computational resource. Um, beyond, um, it, it can do all the things that Bitcoin can do, and beyond what Bitcoin can do, it enables uncensorable, uh, pseudonymous transmission of value on a global system in which all the transaction processors agree on what happened and when. Um, to this decentralized world computation substrate, uh, we can add storage uh, on other types of decentralized systems and bandwidth on other types of decentralized systems, and you get the Ethereum world computer. Uh, it's transparent. Um, deeply secure, non-repudiable um, transactions, um, and natively interoperable, meaning it's easy to uh, have one program use another program's data or to call functions from another program. Um, and essentially, the Ethereum world computer serves as a substrate for building global economic, social, and political systems. Um, the Ethereum world computer also represents a strong cryptographic or mathematical foundation on which to build all of our systems um, as compared to um, systems that are built uh, of humans and laws. Um, uh, so um, legal business information systems in those contexts uh, tend to be siloed. Um, improper manipulation of information uh, is common and consequently over concentration of power prevails. Um, the Ethereum, Ethereum version one is largely feature complete. Um, it's released, it's running beautifully. Lots of people around the world, including many people here, are building decentralized applications for it. Uh, it was important to get it out in the world as quickly as possible so that we could all learn to build decentralized applications and figure out how to, to build companies and decentralized companies um, in the space. Um, I think we have a few years before we really require 
a scalable protocol, um, and that is certainly underway. So there are lots of projects that have been going on for a year or so um, towards that. Um, and in my opinion, scalability is the holy grail. Uh, first system to achieve it um, will probably dominate for quite a while. Um, so consensus and uh, many other developers here and around the world um, are building uh, at the foundation uh, application layer of Ethereum an economic, social, and political operating system. So that's a, a set of core components on which we can all build applications that it will enable the world to run itself according to a, a horizontal consensus-driven organizing principle as opposed to the tra traditional top-down command and control paradigm. Um, some of these core components include uh, wallet identity, reputation system, registries, token issuance and management, token exchange, stable token systems, voting systems, cron systems, glue systems, uh, and more cron systems, apparently. Um, uh, micropayment channels, uh, another um, critical element for, um, for massive scalability. Uh, Dapp stores, Dapp stores everywhere for lots of different uh, uh, kinds of purposes. Uh, uh, many different libraries. We're, we're going to have to uh, essentially um, build all of the libraries onto this decentralized infrastructure uh, eventually. Um, and MetaMask, so um, browsers, different kinds of browsers to, uh, to enable different kinds of devices um, in different contexts to be nodes on the network. Um, on top of these components, we and others are building standalone decentralized applications, so triple entry accounting system, smart document creation and management system, decentralized Reddit, uh, governance system, crowdfunding system. Uh, we're experimenting with different financial instruments, including a total return swap and a, and a call spread. Um, we're building a couple of games um, and more games soon. Um, the other major component of what we're doing and what other groups are doing are open platforms or open industry platforms. Uh, so these platforms are one approach to building a mesh of businesses. Um, so we build the platform, define an initial set of interacting roles on the platform, uh, possibly fill some of those roles, stand up some businesses to fill those roles initially and, um, and let mar market forces uh, take over and let the platform evolve. So we anticipate that uh, um, uh, people in their ingenuity will um, create many more roles on these open platforms. Um, to create these platforms, uh, we sell tokens that are intrinsic to the operation of the platform. Um, tokens can represent governance and dividend rights. Uh, tokens uh, can fund a foundation, uh, which shepherds future development. Um, so that might sound familiar. Um, Many people and companies uh, can be on these platforms uh, and make a living or make a partial living. Um, so some of the platforms uh, that are under development are our prediction markets platform, our music industry platform, our event and community, community management platform, Ether Poker will be a platform, and Ether Loan is also under development. Um, other platforms that are out there uh, include Slock. Uh, Slock is both uh, software and soon to be a decentralized organization. Uh, Maker, same thing. Um, two of the platforms that we built are uh, an open energy markets platform, or that we are building, is an open energy markets platform and a community supported agriculture platform. These are resource generation platforms. Um, so they both have the same underlying architecture. There are generators, um, photovoltaic arrays, or farms, um, soil, seeds, water. Um, and these uh, on these platforms, uh, um, stakeholders generate a resource, kilowatt hours, apples, potatoes. Uh, they optionally store the resource. Uh, they issue tokens against the resource. Um, and they sell tokens into the open market, which can be deemed either on a spot market, um, or they can also issue futures and options um, so that uh, the generators can hedge their activity and consumers can plan and provision. Um, so, uh, these platforms will each constitute meshes of businesses, 
and these meshes will probably interoperate. There will be uh, overlapping meshes of meshes. Um, so you can imagine in a day or in a, a year or two, um, Alice can possibly trade her kilowatt hours and potato tokens for Bob's Apple tokens, um, probably on EtherX. Um, so the invention of money um, has been spectacular for society. Even top-down command and control has taken us to this, which is quite spectacular, um, but we can probably do better. Uh, money is an, abstra an abstraction that facilitates barter. Um, but the money abstraction has required levers of control and power. Um, money, those levers cause money to slosh around the world, creating um, tremendous growth or tremendous dearth, uh, essentially um, instabilities. It's a control system that uh, uh, tends to overshoot quite often. Um, so having our tokens directly backed by assets um, or resources should reduce much of the instability that the use of money systems introduces. Um, this gives you all the goodness of barter without having to carry a cow or bear a boil around with you. Um, so the nothing at stake problem. So perhaps the biggest problem we face in the world today is that there are too few people uh, who feel they have real stake uh, in the human enterprise. Um, there's too little ownership, too little self-sufficiency, too little personal sovereignty. Um, too much leeching on the weak or looting from the state. A uh, gentleman named Ronald Coase won the Nobel Prize for his theory of the corporation. Um, um, as a company grows, the cost of the marginal transaction uh, needs to be less than getting that same task done in the open market. Um, there are efficiencies um, when communication is expensive and de decision making is slow and expensive. There are inefficiencies in, in keeping those mechanisms internal rather than throwing them into the open market. Um, so that effectively, um, when he was thinking about that, that limited the optimal size of the corporation. Um, but if you turn this thinking around, then we can think about uh, um, the minimal optimal size of the corporation. Uh, so in a context in which communications and decision making are fast and cheap, um, it makes sense to outsource everything uh, into the open market except your core competency. Um, Ten years ago, it cost a lot of money to do a tech startup. Today, it costs less money. Um, two years from now, um, will probably cost remarkably less money. Um, when it costs $500 or $50 to form a startup that solves a local or global problem recognized by a smart entrepreneur anywhere in the world, um, we will really be on our way to becoming a planet of stakeholders. Uh, so consensus is still working out the details of its organizational structuring plans, but uh, in broad strokes, uh, consensus is a constellation of projects or companies, projects that will become companies, in a hub and spoke architecture. Every member um, will have equity in the hub, every member will have direct equity in their own projects. Um, we aim, uh, it, it is our major goal to um, have and continue to facilitate rapid, full, open communications, sharing, collaboration, um, and we will do this uh, with me mechanisms that incentivize all to share information, help each other out, um, and essentially root for each other to succeed because we all own everything. Um, so we're currently constructing protocols which make use of some of the core components we built to structure, govern, and operate the consensus hub on the blockchain. Um, also, each of our spoke projects will be able to independently structure, govern, and perhaps fund uh, and operate themselves using those exact same tools. So each spoke project is essentially a quasi-independent entity, um, and all of those quasi-independent entities are actually quite interdependent on one another. When that ceases to be the case, um, then there's nothing stopping them from spinning out and, and doing their own thing. Uh, so consensus encourages the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, founders on a project will form the project using these same tools, uh, define equity splits, and then negotiate terms with their consensus peers um, if they wish to attach that project to the consensus mesh. Um, 
you know, these are partially written. These are protocols for using a bunch of the tools that uh, we've built um, for building blockchain-based orgs um, and also potentially building blockchain-based orgs that have uh, state registration as well. So the visible hand protocols are in the early stages of development. They're suggestions. They're not mandatory if an org uh, wants to form itself, fork any of the protocols, modify them, they're certainly free to do so. Um, the visible hand protocols make use of a suite of tools we're calling Blockwork Org uh, for building and running blockchain resident organizations. Um, the suite of tools includes wallet, ID persona, reputation, boardroom, wave fund, registries, token issuance and management, token exchange, uh, accounting, smart document formation and management, um, and eventually, uh, we would love to see a GitHub-like system to enable us to manage uh, some of our day-to-day -day or all of our day-to-day -day activity. So what that would look like would be uh, core members of a project essentially define a, a suite of tests and throw some bounties out into uh, the system. And ideally, people from all over the world uh, show up, uh, write some code, pass the test. Doesn't even have to be code. It can be a logo or a piece of prose, uh, as long as the tests um, can be passed, uh, and that can involve uh, a suite of oracles, perhaps, um, and the bounty gets paid. Um, so this mesh and governance structure enables startup-minded entrepreneurs to pursue one or more of their projects while benefiting from the diversification of the entire consensus portfolio. Ideally, this mesh will be composed of many interconnected hub and spoke structures, with more being constantly added or fading out of existence as they're no longer necessary. Um, we expect that with people all over the world contributing to projects and collecting bounties, the boundaries of, con of the consensus mesh will fade. Um, and Perhaps, uh, in time, consensus will be seen as the genesis hub of a large spreading mesh of hubs. So consensus as a hub and spoke system, and ideally, many of our spokes will grow into hub and spoke systems in their own right. Uh, consensus in some of these blockchain resident spoke orgs will often be anchored in the real corporate world uh, with properly constructed articles of association that reference blockchain governance mechanisms. Uh, certain jurisdictions have expressed to us interest in helping create hybrid blockchain resident, uh, black blockchain based state resident organizations, uh, and I expect that this will supercharge jurisdictional uh, incentives, taxation, and regulatory competition. Uh, other platforms that you've heard about at this conference and in other places are constructing their own meshes. Uh, Nexus uh, is, it sounds like they're putting together a, a decentralized organization um, for their Ethereum name system. Maker will be a decentralized organization. Augur has done a great job on building a decentralized organization. Slock will do a great job on building a decentralized organization. Um, Slock is an amazing proposition, um, basically giving everybody a chance to own a large piece of the Internet of Things. Um, that's a pretty tangible stake in the world. Um, I expect that there will be meshes of blockchains, uh, so underlying meshes of businesses will have an infrastructure constituting uh, constituted of mes meshes of blockchain, so the public Ethereum network, because of its computational power, can be sidechained to any other blockchain protocol. Uh, private and semi-private consortium chains um, can be side chains of public Ethereum, um, or um, it's very easy to access a public chain, a consortium chain, and the public chain um, in a single business process. Uh, So it should be easier and less expensive to start, fund, and operate a wide variety of businesses on the blockchain. So I expect that non-developers um, will also benefit massively from this mesh. Um, uh, I imagine uh, there will be many innovative uh, developments, but uh, you can imagine cognitive tasks like uh, translation. Um, 
So I've been hearing some people say uh, that this blockchain thing is going to take over the world, uh, or that Ethereum will take over the world. Even a couple people uh, jokingly said that consensus is going to take over the world. Um, so top-down centralized command and control with its concomitant siloed information and power is unstable. Uh, it's inefficient. It's not very, well, it's reasonably effective, but it could be more effective. Um, the big prizes, uh, like the wealth of nations, um, tend to attract capture by well-resourced patient groups. Um, so there always have been uh, cycles of revolution and consolidation. Um, and ev inevitably, since power corrupts, uh, the new boss becomes just like the old boss. Um, but the mesh is fine-grained, flat, responsive, and efficient. So solutions will emerge from it to solve problems when and when done, the elements will reconfigure themselves and solve a different problem. These are quasi-stable dynamic equilibria. Imbalances and frictions or blockages will not be able to persist, enabling fairer, more fluid, unsiloed systems. So if successful, this blockchain thing might just make it impossible to take over the world. So if we combine a fine-grained set of overlapping economic meshes with a plethora of resource or asset-backed tokens, uh, you might just have a quasi-stable foundation for a global economy. This could enable a world of mostly stakeholders. Uh, and with nothing but stakeholders, there's much creation and little destruction, um, which sets the stage for extremely rapid exponential growth to the moon. <laughs>